Hold on, wait, don't scroll just yet. So we've been talking about taking plastic bottles like this or like this and turning them into filament like this or like this. So we can turn them into cool things like this multicolor vase or even this really cool dragon. Look at the colors on here. So in my prior videos, I talked about where to source our bottles from, how to look for the number one that they're PET or more technically PETE, how to clean them up, get the labels off, get the adhesive off, how to color them with permanent marker or a polyester dye. Um, I talked about that in another video. Um, and also how to measure them so that we can cut our ribbons into the right width. And if you want to see any of those previous videos, go check on my bio up here and scroll back through. All those videos are out there. But for today, I've got some ribbon that I've cut up. This has been colored with black Sharpie marker. I'm going to run this through my poultrider and turn it into some usable filament. So stick around for that. Check this out. Here we are back at my poultrider machine. Let's get everything set up here. I've got my spool of ribbon that's been colored. Put that on the spool holder. I've got my cord ready for the take-up gear. I've also got this small piece of drip irrigation tubing. I'm gonna use that to tie um, the filament onto that, that string here to pull on it. Um, let's go ahead and get things set up and remove this. Remove the cover on the back of my hot end here. And I'm gonna start by taking this ribbon and putting it through this wiper and then through this part, which help, helps keep the filament or the, the ribbon straight. Now, if you remember back when we first cut this ribbon, I said that we needed to have a tail on here. And you see that long, thin tail? We're gonna need that in order to get through that hot end and nozzle. So let's wrap this through the wiper. Pull this through here. And I'm gonna take that long, thin end, put it through the hot end and nozzle. This can be a little tricky sometimes. And you'll see just a little bit of this is gonna be poking out of here. This is where it comes in handy to have a pliers. We're gonna go ahead and grab that little bit of ribbon that pulled through there. I'm gonna put this cover back on my hot end here. And this cover with silicone on it is just to keep from uh, keep me from burning myself. This can get awfully hot. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna start up one of my G-code files that is gonna run this at 210 degrees Celsius. And it started, and while that's warming up, I can get a good grip on the tail end of that and very carefully start pulling some of that through Be careful not to, to break off the thin end of that, that ribbon. But as that nozzle begins heating up, we can start pulling that ribbon through. And when I have enough of it here, I can tie this off. Okay, now it's gotten a little harder as I'm at the, the wider portion of the ribbon now. This might make things a little easier to see. Go ahead and grab our ribbon. Pull it a little bit more, that should be enough. I'm gonna take this drip irrigation tube, I'm gonna put the ribbon through it. And at the end of my cord here, I'm gonna put the ribbon through the cord. Get myself a little bit of length here, I'm gonna fold it over. I'm gonna run that ribbon back through the irrigation tubing again. Okay, then I'm gonna take that tag end, and at this end of the tubing, I'm gonna put it in between the two halves of the, 
of the ribbon. Take my pliers, pull the tubing down. I'm gonna pull that loose part of the tag end through. Take the tag end and run it in between the tubing and the ribbon. One more time, I'm gonna take that pliers and grab that tag end. I'm gonna pull it tight so that it makes a little bit of a knot at the back end here. When this is done correctly, there's gonna be quite a bit of tension on this filament and this ribbon, so we don't want this knot to come undone. I'm gonna take the flush cutters here. I'm gonna cut off just a little bit of that tag end. Fold that back over. And then by hand, I'm just turning the, the take up spooling gear here. There's a little better angle. And I've taken some of the slack out of it. Our poultry machine says it's up to temp and I can press start to start spooling. And you'll notice here that this stepper motor is turning. And there's quite a bit of a gear ratio here. This is a rather slow process. It could take from two to two and a half hours to run through about 14 meters of this ribbon. Now, in my setup here, I have this filament out sensor. And as soon as this knot and tubing gets over my little comb here, and I know that it's working correctly, I'll take the safety out of uh, that filament sensor. So at the end of the process, when all the filament is done, it'll automatically shut off. I won't need to be here at the end of it. If you don't have a filament sensor and this just keeps running and running with that loose end of the filament, that filament could get caught between your gears and get all chewed up. So if you'll notice here, as this begins pulling, there's gonna be quite a bit of tension on this. Let's back out just a little bit. If there isn't very much tension on this, likely your ribbon is not wide enough. And if it's not wide enough, it's not gonna create a completely solid filament. Now there can be a little bit of testing back and forth to make sure that you get your ribbon the right width. If it's too narrow, it'll be too easy to pull and it won't make a complete filament that's complete all the way around. If it's too wide, you'll likely not be able to pull it through that hot end. So part of this is trial and error. And I have posted in the past kind of a chart of, of roughly how wide the ribbon should be based upon the thickness of the plastic. You can look back to my older videos for that. Okay, there we go. Now, just like with any Marlin configuration or Marlin setup, let me see if I can zoom in here. Some of you may recognize this Marlin screen. I can actually turn up the speed here. So we'll turn it up to 150%. So that's how I get it started. Now how about I bore you with some uh, some video of this thing running at, uh, at, at high speed.
Okay, well, the pull trigger's done. The filament out sensor has been tripped here. I'll go ahead and put the safety back in. Let's get our filament off. Pull out this lock, pull the stepper back. Get the end of our filament here. Here we are at the end. Go ahead and cut it off here to where the good filament starts. Recover our piece of uh, drip tubing. We'll get this all set up again for the next run. Lock the stepper motor back in place. And there we have it, our finished filament. In the next video, I'll show you how to join a number of these together on some larger spools that I made so we can get it all prepared to use on one of our printers. If you have any questions or comments about this process, be sure to drop me uh, a note in the, in the comments here. Hope you enjoyed and hope you come back for the next one.